Hello Giga Chads and welcome back to the channel. Uh, last video I blue balled you guys harder than Margot Robbie in the Wolf of Wall Street by only finishing half of Raft. So today why don't we be better than her and finish off the rest of it. Let's go ahead and get into things. Okay, so let's get started. So starting off this video, I'm just going to do a quick overview of Raft rights. Or more so I guess just the setup for this type of thing. So as we recall from last time, there's a leader, all the rights are going to be going through that leader, and then we've also got some followers. And the key thing to note here is that in a follower, there's not necessarily a guarantee that every single follower in Raft is going to have the most up-to-date lock. A certain amount of them must, and we'll touch upon why that's the case. However, it is possible that you have a behind follower, like this guy right here, where the log is technically stale because it doesn't include both the operation and term number for a given index. As you can see, the actual operation and term numbers of the leader look like this, and so we're missing C22, which means that in the 22nd term, so meaning this leader right here, we wrote C in that uh, basically area of the log. So what does that actually mean about raft writes? Well, not only do writes have to actually write to the log, but more importantly, they also have to be able to backfill the log. So let's go ahead and talk about how they would do that. So as you can see, let's start on the left over here. We've got a leader and we have a follower which has a non up to date log. So let's imagine that the leader has this right here on the left where this is representing again the operations on the top and the epoch number of the leader that wrote them on the bottom. And similarly, that means the follower is just starting with this right here, where you have from the 20th term, D was written. So something like that is possible if this were a previous leader that died in the middle of a write, or even just a follower of a write that didn't go completely through. The point is we have to overwrite this incorrect value and also write the new values as shown right here. So like I mentioned, writes in addition to just writing the new value also backfill logs. So. Let's now talk about a special invariant in Raft that is very important to keep the correctness of this entire algorithm. So it is going to rely on a couple of facts. One, there is only one leader per term. We covered that last video. The reason there's only one leader per term is because we need a quorum of nodes to be elected leader. And within a term, you can't obviously have two quorums agreeing on a leader. So again, one leader per term. Additionally, like I just said before, writes backfill log. Any successful write that goes through to a follower is going to absolutely fill the log fully up to date. So what that means is that let's say we have a leader and a potential follower that we want to write to. If those two logs on the leader and the follower have the same term number at the same index, they must be identical prior to that index. So let's say this is index, uh, I don't know, 10, and this is index 11 in this log of the leader. And then over here, we've got index 10 and index 11 on the log of the follower. Because index 10 has the same term number on both the leader and the follower, we know that everywhere to the left of index 10 and everywhere to the left of index 10 on both the leader and the follower must be the same. And the term that we use to describe this part of the log in Raft is called the prefix. At the same time, you can see that they start to differ on the index right after that. And as a result, we call this area the suffix. So these are two terms to keep in mind. But the point is, keep this invariant in your head. If two logs are the same at a given point, they must be the same everywhere before that point. Because writes backfill logs, and there is only one leader, which means that it is inherently going to be the same leader that wrote this index. So it's going to be the same leader that wrote all of the log before it if it was out of date. Okay, now that we have covered that, let's look at how writes actually work. So we're gonna start with a leader right here who is going to propose a write because it gets it from some client. And the client can just send that write right over to the leader. Easy stuff. Okay, so the leader says, I have the following right, C21, meaning that basically I am C21 in the position that is highest in the log up to this point, so that's right here. 
I have this as my most recent entry at index two because this is zero, one, two. And then now in addition to that, write D22. So the first thing that it's going to do is send this to the top replica over here. And the top replica is going to reject this right. Why? Because it doesn't actually have at zero, one, two, it doesn't have C21. So it's going to say, no, I don't agree with you up to this point. You cannot send me the right. Please try again. And so now what the leader is going to do is it's going to try again, but like so, it's going to move the index one back. So instead of trying to say here, I have C21, it's gonna say, hey, I have B20. So my prefix is going to be B20, and the suffix is C21 and D22. And then it's going to send that over, right? So prefix is going to be uh, B20, and then the suffix is going to be C and D. And then this time around, because of the fact that they agree on their prefixes, we know that the follower and the leader have the same log from B20 and before. So we only have to send over our suffix. And the reason this is useful, the reason we do this whole thing instead of just sending the whole log in the beginning is because of the fact that it just saves a ton of network latency. If we had to send the whole log every time, we would be sending a ton of data over the network. So instead, what we just send is the suffix. And now this guy can actually respond yes instead. And so the leader says, okay, I've adjusted what rights I'm sending to you. I'm good to go. Additionally, it is now also going to send out C21, like before, as the prefix, and D22 as the suffix to this bottom node. Since the bottom node has already been backfilled sufficiently, it already has C21 at index two, we can go ahead and respond yes right here, and the leader can keep track of that. So basically how this works is like so, if the leader hears yes from a quorum of nodes, it can commit that right locally, and it can also tell the other nodes to commit that right. Until then, it's like a two-phase commit where, you know, once you respond yes for the first time, you're waiting, you have the right locally, but it's not committed. And then finally, once you hear back saying commit, then you go and do D22. So it's pretty simple stuff, actually. The whole point here is that for a write to survive, it needs to go to a majority of nodes. And that allows us to keep our invariant intact. As long as we have a write on a majority of nodes, it means that any leader that gets elected in the future will have that write. Why? Because a leader needs a majority of nodes to get elected. And when you have a majority of nodes that are willing to elect you because your log is equally or more up to date than theirs, that means that the leader's log must include every single write that has been committed. Hence, why this thing is considered technically correct. So, let's talk about some conclusions of Raft because obviously it is a complicated system and it has its uses. So one, Raft creates fault tolerant linearizable storage. The entire point of this thing is to build this guy right here, a distributed log. Because when we can order our writes and we can make sure that those writes are never going away, we have a ton of super useful properties of our database that allows us to ensure correctness and build systems on top of that. Those are going to be for future videos, but I'm looking forward to covering those. Another thing is that Raft is slow. Going back to the previous diagram, everything has to go through our single leader. All writes, and depending on the Raft implementation, all reads as well. And so if that's the case, it means that you're basically bottlenecked by one single node. Even though your system is correct, and even though it's fault tolerant, it's not performant, which means you don't wanna generally use something like Raft as a kind of general database implementation for your application. It's better as a very specific, kind of nuanced piece of your application for code that specifically needs to be correct. And then finally, even though Raft is fault tolerant, it does not replace two-phase commit. So recall that two-phase commit is one where instead of needing the majority of nodes to say yes, we need every single node to say yes. And so if a node says no, things are not gonna go through, this write is not going to happen. Why does Raft not replace two-phase commit? Because Raft is made to create a distributed log where the distributed log is equal on every single system. On the other hand, two-phase commit can actually deal with heterogeneous writes. 
meaning that as opposed to just making a log, although you could, and it's not very fault tolerant, so you probably shouldn't, you can actually send different writes to different nodes. And what that allows you to do is something like cross partition distributed transactions. So feel free to watch the sharding video, but the point is oftentimes if you need to make two different writes to two different partitions, you would have to use something like two-phase commit. Now again, you could use two-phase commit combined with raft if you wanted to use raft to basically deal with your replication to be strongly consistent there, but even still, you are eventually just gonna have to deal with two-phase commit at some point. So yeah, that is pretty much all for this video, guys. I am extremely tired as per usual whenever I make a video on the weekday, so I am probably going to knock the fuck out, but I will see you guys in the next one.